Hey there, Mr. Reddit here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parent Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today. No, I can't leave the gas station I'm working at in the middle of my shift to order McDonald's for you. After that, disrespected, overworked, and underpaid employee gets the last laugh. And after that, am I the jerk for not doing anything for my daughter's birthday? Now for every thumbs up this video gets, one Karen doesn't get any McDonald's. But I need it! So please, smash that like button, and if you're new, subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. No, I can't leave the gas station I'm working at during the middle of my shift to order McDonald's for you. This was quite a while ago, over a year at least, I don't remember exactly how long, but I still think about it from time to time, wondering what planet this lady must have come from to think a request such as hers was even remotely reasonable. I work at a gas station in a small town. Although the town is very small, a major highway cuts through it and the gas station where I work is often fairly busy. We're actually busy enough to justify having two workers, but the owners disagree and figure the gas station itself is small enough that one worker should be able to handle things fine on their own. Yes, I have some stories that prove the owners have clearly never had to work under the conditions they expect us to, but those are for another day. My point is that the cashier on duty for that shift is the only person working there at that time unless they're training someone, and trainees are given exactly two days of training before getting thrown in the deep end because, God forbid, the owners have to pay two people to work at the same time. Never mind it gets busy enough to have lines snake around the whole building quite often. I should also mention our number is similar to a few other places, including some that are actually in the next town over. So when we answer the phone, we answer with, Hello, you've reached name of town, name of gas station. The idea being, upon hearing this, any misdials will realize immediately they have the wrong number and prevent conversations like the following. Obviously, it didn't work in this case. It's a typical day at work, and I had just finished helping a customer. It was a rare, blissfully slow day, so far. So there was only one other customer in the store at the time who was busy browsing the drink section we had when the store phone rang. Normally, our policy is customers in store get priority over phone calls, but as the only customer in the store wasn't actually ready to check out yet, I went ahead and answered it. This is the conversation that ensued. Me. Hello, you've reached our gas station. How may I help you? Karen. Yeah, I want to call ahead my order so y'all have it ready when I get there. I want a McDouble and a large fry with me. Cuts the lady off. Ma'am, I'm sorry, but this is a gas station, not McDonald's. This isn't McDonald's? No, ma'am. It's the gas station. Karen. Are you sure? Me. Glances at the gas pumps outside, thinking, what the heck? Yes, ma'am, I'm sure. Well, I called because I want my order ready when I get there. Me. Uh, well, then you'll need to call McDonald's. Karen. Can't you just run over there and hand your phone to them? Or just order for me and I can talk you through it. At this point, I should mention the store phone is obviously a landline phone. I mean, yeah, it's cordless, but it has a limited range on how far you can take it from the base before it stops working. So not only is this request ridiculous, but it's also literally impossible. Me. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I can't do that. Karen. What do you mean you can't do that? Why not? This is terrible customer service. Unintelligible yelling and ranting. So yeah, she literally started yelling at me because of her mistake and the fact she was apparently too lazy entitled to hang up and dial the correct number, instead expecting me to leave my actual job in the middle of my shift, leaving the store unsupervised to help her pre-order her McDonald's so she wouldn't have to wait, who from her attitude with me, I can only guess she would have immediately complained that it was cold. By now, the in-store customer is ready at the counter, and as the person on the phone is actually not even wanting us, it was time to cut this off, and while admittedly probably wasn't the right way to handle things, I needed her off the phone so I could help my actual customer. I completely dropped my polite retail persona and decided to be absolutely blunt. Look lady, I cannot leave my workplace while I'm working. I have my own customers to help. The phone we're speaking on is a landline, as are most businesses' phones, and even if I wanted to help you, it doesn't have the range to go that far. As for customer service, you are not my customer. You are McDonald's customer, and it's actually not my job to help you order your McDonald's. Have a great day. The last part said in an overly sweet, sarcastic tone that I generally reserve for Karens. I hung up without even giving her a chance to respond, then helped my actual customer. She never called back and I never got in any trouble. So she either didn't complain or complained to the wrong place. 
and I honestly have no idea if she ever did get her McDonald's. Speaking of McDonald's, what's your favorite thing from McDonald's? Please let us know. Travis got me for the win, bruh. Straight up. This respected, overworked, and underpaid employee gets the last laugh. I have always been a hard worker, thanks to my parents' work ethic and raising three kids on a shoestring budget. My dad took every bit of overtime he could get, missing holidays and never using vacation or sick time so my mom could stay home with us kids and have a hot meal on the table every night. When we were school-aged, my mom went back to school and got a job where she could be home when we got off the bus and shuttle us to every sport and activity we wanted to participate in. To this day, I still have no idea how they afforded it all. So it was natural for me, the oldest of three, to apply for jobs as soon as I turned 15, landing a retail position where I worked every hour allowed by my work permit. I saved up enough to buy a used car before I was even old enough to drive, and once I got my driver's license, I worked two or three jobs at a time to save up for college. I got a summer internship at my dad's company that led to me working my way up through the industry towards an engineering position, which I was already studying in college. At the beginning of my last year in college, I had already accepted a job offer with a company I'll call Jerks Inc. for a full-time engineering job after I graduated. As a salaried Jerks Inc. employee, I was not paid overtime but still worked a minimum of 60 hours a week and often 80 to 100 hours a week when I worked at remote job sites all over the US, which was about 80% of the time. These jobs had me outside all day in the scorching summers of the southern US to the frigid winters of the northern states. My manager at the time strictly enforced the policy of only one paid camp day after any given trip, even if I had worked two consecutive 100 plus hour weeks. He never traveled and left work each day the minute he clocked eight hours. Other managers called me copy girl because they only briefly saw me in the morning making copies of manuals and drawings before I raced back out to another demanding job site. One day I was called into my manager's office and reprimanded for frequently using the company phone, designated for business use only, in the middle of the night. I pointed out every one of those calls on the phone bill were from our customers needing emergency technical support. He had no idea my job required 24-7 on-call response. After five years, I had a small team under me who put in the same grueling hours and enjoyed the same $500 bonus each year. I was repeatedly denied requests to give them raises or paid overtime, and when I back calculated my effective hourly wage over the last five years, it was less than I was making at my first job at 15. I subsequently gave my notice. In my exit interview, the bigwigs were very upset and worried that I would take their clients with me. So they tried to make me sign a non-compete agreement on my way out the door. I laughed to myself and politely declined, yet I still took a consulting position in a completely different industry. After a couple months, former clients started calling asking me to work on some big projects. When I told them they would need to call Jerks Inc., they said they already had and my entire team had quit shortly after I did leaving no one there capable of doing the work they needed. I decided to start a side business, intending to work a couple hours per quarter. But when word got out that I was back in the industry, it quickly became more than a full-time gig. My old team had also refused to sign a non-compete when they quit, and they all ended up coming to work for me. The bigwigs at Jerks Inc. threatened to sue me for poaching clients and ex-employees despite not having a leg to stand on and eventually had to contract my company for some of their upcoming projects, requiring the services they could no longer provide in-house. When my team and I walked into Jerks Inc.'s conference room for the first project meeting, the manager stared down at the table. I couldn't hide my huge smile as I handed out our rate sheet, which was around 10 times more than they had paid us as employees. Have you ever been paid unfairly? If so, what did you do about it? Please let us know. Not really, but only because I've never had a job. Am I the jerk for not doing anything for my daughter's birthday? My daughter, let's call her Thea, turned 15 last Saturday, and due to everything going on, we couldn't really celebrate it. I asked her a few days before if there was something special that she wanted to do, and she said no. On the day of her birthday, I asked her if she wanted me to order a cake, and she refused that too. She's introverted and doesn't like making a big deal of things, so I let it be. She spent most of her day talking to her friends on call, and I cooked a nice dinner for her and my son. My wife is usually the one who organizes birthdays and stuff, but she's been living with her mother for the past few days due to some health issues. On most birthdays, my wife is also met with the I want nothing by my daughter, but she does stuff anyways. She usually bakes a cake, buys some gifts, and cooks all her favorite foods. The next day, on call, she asked me what I did for Thea's birthday. 
and when I told her my daughter didn't want a celebration, she blew up on me. According to her, my daughter is too shy to ask for things and doesn't like asking people to make a fuss about her birthday. She was very angry that I didn't even buy her a cake, even after I repeatedly told her that Thea said she didn't want a cake. According to her, these are things that should be done without asking. I would like to mention that my wife coddles my kids a lot. I thought that was the end of the conversation. Later in the evening, my brother-in-law showed up with cake and gifts for Thea. My wife probably asked him to do so, but he's very close to the kids, so I didn't think much of it. But then he jokingly said to me, what kind of father doesn't buy cake for his kid's birthday? I told him the same thing again, and he said that having your birthday during everything going on is horrible enough, and I should have just bought some cake. I agree, it is, but she said she didn't want it. It's been annoying me a lot. I hate how both my wife and brother-in-law keep implying that I don't know what my own kid wants. I just want to know, am I really the jerk? I just did what my daughter asked. More information. 1. I did not do nothing for my daughter. I made pizza for dinner, which she loves. I also sang her the birthday song and hugged her really tight. There was someone who had a problem with that. My daughter isn't big on physical contact, but she likes to hug people on their birthdays. It's a tradition she started. I was not forcing her to do something that she didn't want to do. 2. The whole buying the cake on the same day. I don't know how hard it is where you live, but as long as I can remember, cakes are bought on the day of the birthday. I did not know this was something people didn't do. Unless of course it's a customized cake, and we haven't done that for the kids since they were 10. 3. My wife is not a horrible person. A little bit overbearing, sure. She did wish my daughter a happy birthday in the morning, but she's busy taking care of her mother. Update. Wow, I can't believe the number of things people picked apart from this post. Some of you are worse than English teachers trying to find hidden meanings in blue curtains. However, I decided to apologize to her. I did speak to my daughter. I set her down and apologized for not doing anything or buying a cake, and her only response was, Papa, chill, it's just a birthday. I did give her money, and before you get on my case of how unthoughtful that is, she usually spends her money on books or clothes. I feel those are hard things to pick for anyone, not just my daughter. I would rather she buy something she likes than be stuck with something she doesn't. I think the major problem for people is that I waited till the day of her birthday to buy her a cake, which means I don't care about my daughter. I don't know what to say about that. Getting a good cake isn't that hard. People keep saying I should have pre-ordered so they don't run out of cakes. If the store doesn't have what I want, I'll just go to another store. There's a million of them. Also, that one person who got on my case for saying my daughter instead of our daughter needs to calm down. I'm going to end this here. Thanks to all the people who sent me an award. Well, what do you think? Is OP the jerk or did he do nothing wrong? Please let us know. I dare you to not get me a cake on my birthday, Mr. Reddit. Boss tells me I'm not a manager, so I stopped doing her job. I have worked in my job for a long time now. My boss is never available for help and hardly on site. Recently, she has got a new manager who's not impressed with her work ethic, but then lockdown happened and he had to shield. She has gone straight back to her old ways. Boss will often ask me to do her work for her to save her coming in, which I've never minded doing up until recently. I had a meeting with my boss after an incident at work where someone tried to attack me. I told my boss I didn't feel supported by her after it had happened as she wasn't present and didn't manage it well afterwards. In the middle of the meeting, boss says, perhaps you want to consider some easier work in a different department. Me, what? Why? Boss, well, you do take on a lot of extra work that you don't need to. A lot of this work is manager's jobs. Maybe you need to learn to say no instead of taking on all this work. I asked if there was something wrong with my standard of work, if she had concerns, etc. And she says no. Three months down the line, four of the team leave and they got new people in. Boss, oh, OP. Can you induct new starters on their first day? Me, sorry boss, that's a manager's job. Boss, can you complete fire risk assessment? Me, sorry boss, that's a manager's job. After a while, she stops asking me things. Then one day, she's working from home. I'm pretty sure she's been telling her manager she's on site throughout lockdown, but mostly isn't. This huge incident kicks off with residents, emergency services are called, etc. I call boss and explain to her what happened. Boss, OP, can you please do follow-up with commissioning body, staff, and residents involved, and write the report, and send it all directly to me, please? Me, sorry boss, you will need to come in to manage this. I'm not a manager, that's not my job. Boss, just this once, please. I refuse to manage this incident. Turned out, she was visiting a friend who lived at the coast whilst she was supposed to be on site. 
Someone accidentally let it slip to her manager when he called in the incident and there was no one to manage. He asked me to deal with the incident. I explained I couldn't and that boss had reported me as taking on too much work to OH. A full investigation has been launched into her conduct and ability to do her job. Manager now talks to me directly and supervises me. He's helping me apply for a promotion. Boss is on leave pending investigation. Edit. Again, to answer people who ask why I would do boss's work in the first place. The residents still deserve support and to be given the best chances. If I can make that easier for them by taking on extra work, I will. There's enough going on for people who come to us. They don't need things being messed up because others don't want to do their jobs. My eyes are okay, lady, but you might need an appointment with your eye doctor. So this happened earlier today at a Target-like store in India. For the record, store workers wear black polos with orange collars and the name of the store embroidered in the same orange, black pants and orange masks. Now I went there today to get supplies wearing a bright yellow floral blouse, a blue floral face mask and blue ripped jeans. As I am carefully trying to take my cart to the checkout counter, a lady zips across me and cuts me in line. Now because of her speed in cutting across from me, I didn't see her and my cart hit her accidentally. I immediately apologized because my cart hit her. I'm sorry, even if it wasn't actually my fault because she was cutting in line. But this lady starts yelling at me. Are you blind? Me. I am sorry ma'am, but you came in front of me. Watch where you're going. I don't know where these people are from. Who the heck hired you? I expect to see the manager. Me. Ma'am, I'm a customer just like you. I don't work here. Furthermore, I'd recommend not dashing across crowded stores if you don't want someone running into you. Lady. You swine. At this point, I wore my headphones and walked over to another counter, and the lady starts complaining, still screaming, to her cashier. Karen. Do you have no protocol as to how you hire people? I demand to see a manager. Cashier. Ma'am, she's not an employee, and you did cut in line. I've had it with you people. I need a discount for your rude behavior. I demand to see a manager. By this point, my cashier has already called for a manager and has finished processing my items. Manager comes, unbeknownst to us, she's seen the entire incident. She walks over to me first and says, I'm sorry, ma'am. On behalf of the store, you get 10% off on your total order, and motions to my cashier to process the discount. Manager then heads over to the lady. Lady. Your employees are not only blind, but also rude. Manager. Sorry ma'am, but the ma'am in the yellow is not an employee, but a customer. As you can see, our uniforms are very different. I'm sorry, but we cannot issue you a discount, but I can recommend an excellent eye doctor to you. And manager walks away. I don't know what happened after, because I was done paying and had to exit, otherwise I would have held up the line. The conversation has been translated from Hindi to English, so the dialogues aren't exact, but are as close as I could get them without changing the meaning. Am I the jerk for taking away my pregnant wife's credit card because she keeps ordering food that's bad for our baby? My wife is 6 months pregnant, and cravings are hitting her hard. I sympathize with that, but unfortunately, it seems like her cravings are all for things that our doctor has specifically told us to avoid for the health of our baby. She just can't seem to control herself when the cravings hit. She ends up door dashing the forbidden items. It's not like she's done this once or twice either. In the last week, she has ordered Subway four times and sushi twice. This has been going on for months. I've tried to convince her to make these things at home with approved ingredients, but she says they just aren't the same. I've asked her to consider the health of our baby and she says that her mental health is more important. I can't help but think that this is a ridiculous notion. Foregoing uncooked lunch meat and seafood isn't going to give her emotional trauma. I'm the main breadwinner in the house and decided to cut off her access to our cards for the time being. I think this might make me a bit of a jerk because it makes me feel more like her parent than her partner. But I am a soon to be parent. I need to protect my kiddo. Edit. Sushi and Subway aren't the only things that she's been eating on the forbidden list. Those were just the examples from the last week. I probably should have included that in my OP. She's also eating a lot of undercooked meat and eggs, drinking energy drinks, had a few glasses of wine, etc. Edit 2. Doctor has been informed of her diet choices. He sternly told her that she needs to change that. She refuses to listen to him about this too. Edit 3. I accept that Reddit thinks I am the jerk. However, I still feel this is justified behavior. I will not allow my wife to have a credit card until she agrees to follow the doctor's recommendations for the health of our child. She still has access to our Amazon account with the card saved and is free to shop for whatever needs she has. But the only food that will come into the house is what I bring home from the grocery shopping or if we plan to get takeout together. Oh, and all the people recommending that book, Expecting Better by Emily Oster, 
No thanks. She is an economist, not a medical doctor, not even a scientist in the field of biology. I will continue to go by the guidelines set forth by medical professionals. Well, what do you think? Is OP the jerk or not? Please let us know. My TV has no picture. This is from the late 70s in London. A friend had a hi-fi shop which sold TV sets among other electronics. I used to help out on Saturdays. After demonstrating some TV sets to a customer, he bought one and told him we would set it up and deliver later that night after the shop closed, or he could lug it home himself if he wanted it earlier. He chose delivery. Setting up consisted of manually tuning in to the three channels available then, BBC One, BBC Two, and ITV. This was done by sliding open a drawer to the set to reveal a set of flywheels, one per channel. There were six altogether to cater for future expansion if by any miracle more channels were ever added. Having tuned the channels in, our delivery guy went and installed the set in the client's flat. All was good, client was happy and he signed off. Monday, my friend got a call saying there was sound but no picture on all three channels. Since there was sound, it was obvious this was not a tuning issue, so something else had gone wrong. He was asked to bring the set in as he was swamped and couldn't get anyone to him until midweek. Client came in with the set. My friend plugged it in and behold, every channel was there in living color. Exit one perplexed customer with TV. Next day, same issue is reported. Sound but no picture. As it happened, our delivery guy was going to be in the customer's area, so he was told to go get the TV and bring it in. Delivery guy gets to the client's place. Client switches the set on to demonstrate sound but no picture. Delivery guy sees the problem immediately, crosses the room and draws the curtains closed. Voila, perfect picture. Customer had placed the TV such that the sun was shining directly on the screen. Am I the jerk for getting rid of the dog? A few months ago, my husband, 35 male, and I, 29 female, spoke about getting a pet. I suggested a cat as I've grown up with them all my life and know how to take care of them. He wanted a big, classic dog and told me about his buddy who breeds German Shepherds and wanted to get one of those. I've never been around dogs at all, let alone a big handful of a German Shepherd, so I shut down the idea and suggested rescuing a smaller dog and to get a German Shepherd later. I stay home with our two-year-old and would be the primary caretaker of the dog, and as I don't know how to take care of a dog, a smaller one would be easier to handle and care for in my mind. Plus, our house and yard are not very big, and I do not want a dog that will grow to be huge and rowdy when I'm taking care of it most of the time. Besides, I don't like big dogs much at all, and this is definitely something we both should agree on. He seemed a bit disappointed, as he does love shepherds, but understood my point. The idea has been spoken about a bit more, and a few weeks ago, we went to the local rescue and found the most adorable little mutt. I said I wanted that one and said we'd be by to get her on Friday when my husband was off. Coincidentally, our kid had a checkup on that date too. We agreed he'd get the dog and I'd take care of our kid. Lo and behold, when I come home, a rambunctious German Shepherd puppy was waiting for me along with an embarrassed husband. He said he was sorry for not getting the dog we had agreed on but his friend's deal was too good to pass up on and figured I'd learn to love the dog and would catch on quick to caretaking. Um, no, this is not what we agreed on. I started freaking out on him and demanded he give the dog back, but he refused. Not to mention the cost of the German Shepherd versus the Little Mud. Needless to say, I have been furious with my husband. I have tried to care for this dog and my toddler at the same time, but I cannot. I loathe this dog. It is so needy and hyper and not what I wanted and I am mad at my husband for making this decision. So a few days ago, I took the dog to the rescue where we found the small mutt from earlier, who has now been adopted. I no longer want a dog or any pet at all except for a cat. My husband is angry with me, saying I wasted the pretty penny he spent on the dog and that I should have given it more time to grow on me, but I think he violated my trust and was selfish in getting a dog I didn't even want in the first place. Am I the jerk? Edit. Our home is ill-equipped for anything bigger than a basset hound. We played with the mutt we were planning on getting a few times and she was old and very calm. It's a lot easier to get a small dog to stop doing something than a German Shepherd. I don't know the breeder friend of my husband's. He knows a lot of people and since I had no interest in a German Shepherd for right now, I didn't ask. I couldn't have taken it back to the breeder. I don't know who they are. The German Shepherd could have ended up anywhere. Please don't judge me on what could be. Edit 2. Breeder was almost definitely not reputable. The dog came with no papers and my husband got him for $350, down from an alleged $900. The rescue seemed to be the safest and easiest option and assuming he has not been adopted already, I will contact a GSD rescue in the morning and alert them of the puppy as one commenter suggested.
Speaking of dogs, what's your favorite breed of dogs? Please let us know. Poodles all day, bruh. Let me speak to your manager, young man. I will have you fired. The owner and I are good friends. First, let me explain a few things here. This is not my story as such, but I got to witness it firsthand. A good friend of mine is from a family that owns three very successful Italian restaurants with a pizza oven that uses actual wood, really top of the line. So he learned the business basically from the day he could walk. When he was 25, he had a good business idea, a place in the middle of the city that sells mostly slices out a window, but also whole pizza, pasta dishes, and salad and does delivery, plus a few small tables inside if someone wants to eat there. So he created a solid business plan and had his eyes on a prime location. It's 50 meters away from the biggest parking area in the city with 400 parking spots where several times a year we have big city fairs and anybody who wants to go in the park strolls right by it. So his dad said he would finance him but as a credit to be paid back in a timely manner. They agreed on everything and a year later he opened up. The story takes place about two years after they have opened and the place is hot. He already repaid almost 75% of the credit in a mere two years. Usually there is a line for the slices, which are from a family-sized pizza, like 60 centimeters across, and you get 1 8 for 250 to 350, depending on what is on it. We are sitting on a table playing chess while his guys run the shop. He had already worked a full 11 hours that day. In comes a baby boomer couple, and it was clear as day that the lady with the you-know-which haircut rules this relationship with an iron fist. They sat down on the table next to us and after not even a minute, she rudely asked us why she has no menu yet and to get off our lazy butts. I already wanted to tell her I do not work here, but he winked at me and walked over to their table giving them our menus. I'll call her entitled lady and my friend just friend. Disclaimer, this was nearly 15 years ago, so the spoken words are not word for word but represent what was said. Entitled Lady It's about time you get off your lazy butt. She has waited a minute. You can't play chess when you have people waiting. What kind of crappy service is this? So he took their drink orders and walked behind the bar to make their drinks right away. They had to wait maybe three minutes for their drinks. They ordered beer that takes a bit to do correctly. Half a wisen for you Germans. This story takes place in Germany. About time. Did you have to brew it first, or what's it taking so long? My friend's patience is starting to wear thin, but he still stays friendly. You saw me walk to the bar and make your drinks right away, then return right away. Those beers take a bit to pour correctly. I'm sorry, but there is no way I could have brought those to you any faster. We are customers, and this is how you talk to us? Ever heard of the customer is always right? How can you be so rude to paying customers? Now my friend really had enough. I was very respectful towards you, while you were very rude from the moment you came in here. The moment he said that, she got this weird grin on her face, and you could tell this was exactly what she wanted. Shut up! How dare you! I will have you know, me and the owner are old friends. I will have your job over this. Now get me your manager! Friend, please, I need this job. Too late. You should have thought about this before you treated guests this rude. Now, get me the manager. Friend went behind the bar and had a short talk to one of the older guys working there. Let's call him OG. Both returned to the table. OG. What seems to be the problem, ma'am? Entitled lady, suddenly playing the sweet old lady that is so nice. When we came in here, your server sat there with someone and played chess. We waited and waited and finally asked nicely if we could have a menu. He rolled his eyes at us and gave us the menu from his table. Then we ordered drinks and he walked over, made our drinks, and then just stood there for a good 10 minutes before he brought our drinks. And when I politely asked him to bring our beer, he was really rude to me. Since I know the owner, we eat here all the time and usually the service is excellent. I demand you fire him and comp our meals. OG turning to my friend, is that really what happened? Friend, of course not. She came, entitled lady, suddenly, all the mask of friendliness gone, starts screeching. What are you asking him for? I just told you what happened. 
Are you calling me a liar? Wait till the owner hears of this. At this point, my friend and OG could no longer hold it back and they started laughing. You think this is funny? Never have I been so insulted. <gasps> friend. Yeah, I know. Wait till the owner hears of this. Oh wait, the owner already did hear of this. I am the owner, and I have never seen you in my life, nor have you ever eaten here. You two are just trying to scam a free meal out of me by being impossibly difficult till the server finally snaps or does something wrong, so you can ask for a manager and lie to him about what happened. Now you pay for your beer and then you go, and do not even think of coming back. You are banned. Wow, I had no idea people could get that red in the face. She put 10 euros on the table. Now get out. And they shuffled out to never return. Boy, that was the most entertaining attempt to scam him I have ever witnessed. Please watch this video next. You will love it. And if you join as a channel member today, we will give you a special shout out in our next video. And to have us make a video saying anything you'd like us to, just come visit us on Fiverr. Link pinned in the comments below.